one of the more intriguing matches of the day at 157 pounds. It's number 12, Eric Baroni, taking on number two, Tyler Berger. And even though Baroni is only is 10 spots away from Berger, this could be an interesting match here, Rob. Once you get into that top 12, sometimes there can be not a lot of uh, separation between those top 12 opponents. Begin this match. Berger went in for a shot. Baroni with nice sprawl defense. Berger with a record of 16 and 2, 10 and 1 in duels this year. Well, for Baroni, 14 and 7, and 1 and 2 in the Big Ten. Baroni tried to go in for a shot, but Berger is able to escape. Almost wrapped around for a takedown, but before he can do that, both wrestlers go off the mat and they'll reset. Exciting sequence there with. Offense, counter offense, and counter offense again. Last time out for Berger, he took on 157 pound number one, Jason Nolf of Penn State. And Berger lost that one in decision by decision, 10 to 4, but it was a pretty close match and a good performance there by Berger. Berger did a great job in that match of of being def selectively defensive. He did get to Nolf's legs a couple of times, which doesn't happen very often, but he kept Nolf off of his legs then a lot better than most wrestlers have done this year and even in the past couple years. It's been a fast descent for Berger as of late to crawl up to the number two ranked wrestler at 157 pounds. He was ranked in the top 10, but really shot up the rankings after victories over Hayden Hidley of North Carolina State, who was ranked number four at the time, and beat Ryan Dinkin here at home of Northwestern, who was ranked number two. And as a result, he is the number two ranked wrestler at 157 pounds in the country. And is one of the more distinguished wrestlers in Nebraska history as both wrestlers go off the mat and want to reset. Interesting stall call there. Usually when the, the officials like to see the, uh, the wrestler shoot the opponent out of bounds instead of push him out of bounds like that, but they felt that Berger backed up a little too much. Berger back in on the leg, a single leg, keeping his elbow deep to control Baroni's leg a little bit easier. Shot, looking to get two points. 45 seconds to go in the first period. Tied at zero. Right here, you'd like to see Berger pull Baroni back into the center of the mat so he has a little more real estate to work with instead of right there where he's just got a foot in. The stalemate call, the reset in the center of the mat with 30 seconds to go. Berger, a three time NCAA qualifier, including finishing third at the NCAA Championships a season ago to earn All-American honors. All for Eric Baroni, in his freshman season, he qualified for the NCAA Championships but did not place, and he finished eighth at the Big Ten Championships that year as well. Last year, kind of a more disappointing year compared to his freshman year. He went one and three at the Big Ten Championships, not placing. And the first period comes to an end, tied at zero. We'll go to the second with Eric Baroni choosing to go in bottom position. Baroni's done a good job this first period keeping, being as offensive as Berger and staying in his face and being physical with his hands. Berger looks to keep position here. Baroni looked for the takedown, and Baroni will get the escape. So Baroni goes up 1-0 over Tyler Berger. And for Baroni, this could kind of be a redemption season after a disappointing year a year ago. And he's done well this season. He finished seventh at the Cliff Keen Invitational early in this year, and finished fifth at the Midlands Tournament in Chicago. One of the more prestigious tournaments of the season and Baroni looked like he had his hand hooked around Berger's uh, equipment there. 
Yeah, with that, with those headgear straps, if you can get your finger hooked in there, you can really control somebody's head. And here is the Reba. We'll see what, yeah, he kind of did. Had a hand hooked there on the headset, on the headgear of Berger. But nothing is, no points are awarded to anyone from the referee, so still one nothing in the favor of Eric Baroni as again a stalemate is called. They reset with a minute 10 to go in the second period. Riding time not a factor, only at 14 seconds in favor of Berger. Berger in on a shot. He's got one leg. Baroni doing a good job using that wizard to put weight down on Berger's head so he's not able to slide around behind and collect the other leg. And now we get a potentially dangerous move called. So once again, they'll reset. So we've got 35 seconds to go in the second period. Number 12, Eric Baroni leads number two, Tyler Berger. Really not much offense here in this match so far. The only point being an escape. Before Baroni at the beginning of the second period. Before the match, we saw Baroni doing some Split stripes, stripes, uh, split type of stretches, and he's definitely used them to fend off Berger's single leg attacks. And so we go to the final period at 157 pounds, and it looks like we have a stalling call on Baroni, so they're giving one point to Tyler Berger, and the Fighting Illini bench is not happy about it as they want an explanation, and they're going to challenge the call. They have the challenge brick in their hand. And they do throw it down. And no, they're not going to review it. They're actually going to give Illinois a bench warning. Hard to tell exactly what transpired there for the call. So now we are tied to begin the second period at one apiece, and Berger will be on bottom. And if he gets an escape, he will take the lead. Berger got up to his feet nice and quick, but Baroni kept that pressure forward and was able to get the restart. Berger looking for the escape and the lead. Baroni's got one leg hooked. And both go off the mat. We'll reset once again. But again, I believe there's a stalling warning on Baroni. Baroni did a little too much of pushing Berger out of bounds instead of pulling him back in and trying to finish, finish with the leg. And there's the escape for Tyler Berger. It's two to one in the favor of the senior. And he goes in for a shot. And no call yet, and there it is. Two points for Tyler Berger. Good adjustment there on that leg attack from Berger. The been struggling a little bit to finish that single leg, so fake to that single leg side in a misdirection action and got a low single on the other leg of Baroni. So one minute to go in this third period. Tyler Berger has a four to one lead over, over Eric Baroni and looks to ride this one out. And look to come away. And now Berger getting some near fall points. Now looking for the pin. For Berger, look for Berger to switch to the half with that right arm and really 
Baroni in trouble. Berger trying to elevate the head. And there it is. Tyler Berger showing off his guns as he comes away with a pin over Eric Baroni. Berger's excited there. A little headgear spike. Probably going to lose a team point or at least a warning there, but. With a match like that, there was a little extra curricular shoving out of bounds and nothing nothing too crazy, but a little bit to where it's definitely fired up and to get a pin after after a battle like that. It's good to let your emotions out a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the next guy onto the mat. Okay, uh, yeah. <coughs> so uh, and Berger a late pin, well controlled there on the back. The you wanna make sure that they're kinda on you know, but now Illinois has challenged something in that sequence. So they are reviewing a call. And Rob, anything you saw there that is reviewable that you're thinking Illinois is challenging? If I had to guess, I would say maybe some sort of illegal hold. I don't, I don't believe you can challenge a pin. Here is the pin. And they threw the challenge brick while Baroni was on his back right before he was pinned. So it had to do either during that sequence or a little before. It was probably um, when, right when Berger took him over, he really lunged and put Baroni's shoulder in a bit of a, a bad position. Sometimes you can really torque somebody's shoulder like that. So that's probably where they're looking to see the another shot at it. It's hard to see for sure with Berger's right shoulder, but the rest of looking at Baroni's uh, torso and back, it looked, it would be pretty easy to assume that was a fall. From where we're at, the official had a little better view of it. Now the referees. At the further review, the call on the mat is confirmed. No illegal hold. And they reviewed an illegal hold. The call is confirmed, so Tyler Berger comes up with the pin.